An exciting part of the guitar scene is blending guitar sound with AI, economic systems, wider participation, teamwork, and open source tech and ideas. The Kipper Profiler was a unique amplifier modeler and had a long standing history of being alone in the market for a while. But many other things like the Helix and the Axe FX and the Quad Cortex and the Tone X and the Head Rush, they've all come into the market fo focusing on machine learning and kind of copying the sound of real amplifiers and real guitar gear. The two popular open source, 100% free products are now available, NAM and Proteus by Guitar ML. Both are considered by users to be at least as good, some say even better, than what's on the market. Now, NAM, which is Neural Amp Modeler, was created by a person named Steve Atkinson. Proteus was created by Keith Blomer. They both are machine learning models that create amp and pedal models, much like Kemper or Neural DSP or Tonex or anything. But yet again, they're free of charge and are completely open source, unlike the others. But the most important question with something like NAM or Proteus is, how does it work? Does it sound good? And is it better than everything else out, out there combined? So uh, let's dive through some gear, uh, play through a couple different amps. I'm gonna play a pedal through an amp, profile everything, show you how it's done. And uh, let's let you be the, uh, the judge on what you think. Thank you. 
All right, so let's talk a little bit about how you actually install it. I'll go through it briefly. Uh, Jason's The Door has done a great video on this. All these links are going to be in the description below. So don't need to write any notes or anything like that. Just look in the description. You'll see all this stuff. So basically, we need to install the plugin. So we're going to go to this page. If you're on a Mac, you're probably going to use the one that uses the Mac. Uh, if you're on a Windows machine uh, or PC, rather, I guess, uh, you're going to use this one. So download that. Uh, you also want to download this wave, and it's going to give you this sound. It's a big, long sound. So, and it's, uh, you know, several minutes of that. This is going to train um, the, the system, so to speak, in order to model the amplifier. And now for the next part, you're going to load this into your DAW. I've already have a template set up. So uh, this, this here is the waveform. And um, we're going to play this waveform through uh, basically the output uh, of our uh, audio interface. And then that's going to go, let's say you're modeling an amp. That's going to go through, I'm using a reamp box, which is recommended. Uh, you don't have to, but better results usually. So we're going into a reamp box that goes into the amplifier. Then out of the amplifier, I'm using a two notes captor, which then goes back into my audio interface. And then I just record it here on this track right here. Notice it's muted because you don't want to play it at the same time. It'll cause basically like this big feedback loop and nothing but noise. And you'll also notice if you look on the track here, I have no output. So even, even if I uh, you know, accidentally did mess it up, I don't think it would actually do any harm, but good practice just to mute it. Okay, moving on. So we're gonna play this. We're gonna capture the sound of the amp. We already have the amp set how we want it. We've play tested it, all that good stuff. And uh, that's going to spit out in a file. You're then going to basically bounce that file down into a mono track, 48, you wanna record this in 48K, uh, mono track, 24 bit, and then you're going to take that track and this wave here, the original wave that it came with, and you're going to go to the Google Collab. Now, uh, Google Collab is ba you're basically using Google's computers to do some of the some of the training. Well, all the training and uh, heavy lifting, so to speak. So you can run it from your computer if you like to do that sort of thing. There's other instructions on how to do that. I like to do things the easy way, so I'm going to use Google Collab. So when you do that, um, click on this folder over here. You'll just drag those two files into here. They'll upload. And then you, as you, if, you're probably not familiar with Google Cloud, but if you are, uh, there's little like little things here. So you just run this. See so how when you hover, it has a little play link. You run that. That'll take a minute or so. And then you can set your epochs. Epochs are kind of like, how well do you want to train it? How well do you want to, you know, teach it through machine learning to be the best that it can be? And there's a point where it's like, it's pointless. Like, you know, 10,000 epochs is probably not going to be much better at all, if any, than, you know, three or 400, I'm guessing. With that in mind, the more epochs you use, the more uh, resources you use on Google's Collab, Google Collab, and also the free version of Google Collab, you only get like a limited amount of time, I believe it is, to, to, to use it every day. You could pay a couple bucks and, and get some more time, but, but for the free version, um, yeah, if you're modeling every amp, then it's going to take a bit. So after that, we are just going to hit the, I'm, I don't have anything loaded up here, so I'm not going to do it, but we'll hit this. It'll start training. Um, 300 epochs file. Usually, it seems like it takes me about 20 minutes or so. I'm guessing somewhere near that area, maybe maybe a little less, a little, little more. Not real sure. I've never really timed it. And then it's going to spit out up here. It's going to spit out a, um, a model.nam file. And then all you do whenever you go into your DAW or your DAW or whatever you want to call it, you could just literally load it up here. This is logic. So. If you're using a different DAW, it's going to be a little bit different. Look for Steve Atkinson. And there you go. Select the model. And it's going to ask, where do you want to pull it from? And you just literally load it that way. And that's it. So it's pretty easy. A little bit more of a process than some of the stuff that you pay for. That probably will change because there's so many people working on this right now. Uh, so it probably will change. It'll get even easier, but it's pretty simple. 
already. And really, Proteus works basically basically the same way. It's a different file that you use from, from Keith. Um, but it's basically the same type of thing. You're still using Google Collab. You're still running those steps. You still have to put in how many epochs you want. I believe his may be actually set to 300, I believe. I uh, could be wrong there, but, but it's basically the same exact process. You're just using a different file overall, and you're using the Proteus plugin. So it's really that simple. One more thing I probably should note too, when you're recording um, on, you know, whenever you're actually recording your file here, obviously your file is going to be a little bit longer. Just make sure to go all the way to the very end, zoom way in and just cut off the extra because it has, the file has to be the exact same length. Um, th yeah, that's basically all you have to do here. Just make sure it's the same length, cut off the extra, make sure to export it as mono. If it's stereo, I don't think it will work on this version. That may be fixed in the future too, but, um, or not fixed, but changed. And um, yeah, so it's that easy. The key differences between Proteus and AM are, well, Proteus needs less pro processing power and it can be used on older computers a little bit easier. Proteus also has full knob modeling, meaning you model a knob right now. Uh, but NAM will probably come out with their own version of um, modeling knob controls as well. Both are easy to download and use, but making your own tone models and amp model captures with the software is a little bit of an art right now. It does take a few pieces of, of equipment. Both requ require downloading a reference file, running your DAW, figuring out how to send the signal out of your DAW into your amp, capturing that, making sure all your levels are right and there's no clipping that's not desired, and then figuring out how to tap the direct output of an amp while providing it a load. I use a captor for, you know, it's captor for mine. I run it direct from the amp back into the DAW. Super easy with that. A uh, cool thing though, the license attached to both NAM and Proteus allows for users to use it for commercial purposes and build third-party solutions around it by design under the conditions, basically, Model responsibly, in other words, you know, basically don't cop other, copy other files or plugins from other companies. And then share responsibly, meaning, you know, create new and cool models. Don't just repackage or reshare other models. Instead, link to the, that source if that's what you're going to do. But there are already websites where, uh, where users can upload their captures like tonehub.com for NAM. Uh, Guitar ML has a Facebook group as well as an official website along with session, sections that you can download profiles that others have shared. Uh, also on uh, on Facebook, NAM also has a, a area there that you can download files from there as well. But com commercial sellers have not yet become involved with NAM or Guitar ML just yet, but it's very possible for them to do so. These open source neural modeling resources can change things for smaller companies. Uh, you know, where maybe they don't know that much about AI or, or machine learning. But this means that companies big and small could develop plugins using NAM and Proteus for just like a fraction of the cost. So NAM, Guitar ML, and open source modelers like them are part of a changing paradigm in the gear culture on the internet that I would say is disruptive and revolutionary. And then this is why it's so disruptive, why I think this could be so revolutionary is... Oops, sorry, HW. I didn't realize that I... I guess I kind of stole that from you. It just resonated with me. So my thoughts on the excitement of this new technology? Well, it's my belief that this is the beginning of a new shift in guitar gear culture, much bigger than when uh, modelers like Fractal, Kemper, and later Neural DSP hit the market uh, and changed gear culture forever at that point. But the trick here, my opinion, is to ELI-5 it. Make it simple enough for anyone to be able to understand how to do it, uh, how to do it easily with the, the least amount of effort or thinking, and um, then, I would say people need to sell professional profiles. Somebody needs to sell professional profiles, which will prompt all of the popular YouTubers to do gear reviews using these profiles, because in that situation, often they get a cut of the proceeds or else companies just pay them to make the videos. Uh, the next step, which is happening right now, is for companies to make profile loaders, pedals, that will work with a variety of different profiles. So overall, again, it's my opinion that this is completely revolutionary and it's a huge market disruption, and I love it.
But right now, and for the past six or seven years, a large majority of companies have simply been taking classic circuits, reimagining them in some way, sometimes with mods, sometimes not, but just making them look cool, marketing them well, and then rinse and repeat. And I'm admitting here, even our company has been guilty of this. But why? Well, it was more accepted to have original circuits between like 2000, 2015 or so. But this was when like boutique really started kind of being accepted among the masses. During this time, the majority of customers would reach out and make sure that the pedal they were buying wasn't a clone of anything. But since then, there's kind of been a paradigm shift where people would ask, well, which one of your pedals sounds most like the Tube Screamer or the Klon or the Fuzz Face or whatever? There are so many companies just putting out clones that the market's completely saturated and honestly, not very exciting. It's kind of like playing in a cover band. It's fun, but not always that exciting. But it's my belief that with the popularity of, you know, Kemper and Fractal and Helix and Neural DSP and now NAM and Proteus, people will once again get excited about something finally new because it's free, it's open source, and it's getting easier. But it's fresh. It's like when a new type of music breaks out, becomes popular in a way, or it's analogous to Tesla, uh, if Tesla gave everyone free cars. There's massive potential in all of this, though. The thing that's missing so far is awareness brought to the masses. Just one possible, one idea as a commercial use case. Companies like ours could make profiles of new gear that we come out with so you could try it in your DAW. You could just literally load up the profile and see what it sounds like through your amp. But the link to download both NAM and Proteus are in the description along with the link to the Facebook groups and uh, you know the profiles there that you can download. And everything you need is in the description below. So thanks for watching. See you next video. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you thought of this uh, particular technology. Are you gonna use it? You gonna try it? It's free, might as well. See you next time with a new video.